Palliative care is a service that is offered to patients with life-limiting illnesses. Looking at them as a whole, addressing their psychological issues, physical issues, social issues, as well as spiritual issues. And it is quite different from the medicine that you know, because medicine focuses on curative. And yet these patients, it's already known that actually they're not going to get better. All we need is to palliate them. Right now we are in, deep in the village of Kigorovia. We are going to see a patient. And at times with these palliative care patients, they live right inside the villages. You have to travel for hours before you get there. And even when you get there with a car, you have to leave it somewhere and walk on foot to kind of access their homes. You may travel for a, uh, for a whole hour before you get to the patient's home and walk a few for a few minutes. It could be a kilometer or so uh, before you get to the patient's home. They live right inside, inside the villages and some of them actually hardly access uh, healthcare services because they can't get out of the of their villages to go into the trading center, to the towns, to get to see a healthcare worker. Boniface has HIV AIDS with Kaposi's sarcoma. As you can see his legs, that is his problem. Bonifex. Okay. 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 The husband has HIV AIDS with Kaposi's sarcoma. The wife is also HIV AIDS. She's HIV positive. All the all their twelve children are fine. They were checked. They are they are HIV negative. Yeah, it's only the, the, the father and the mother who are who have HIV. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, this is James Barley. i No, i uh -huh. James Bale is being nursed by his wife. Uh, they had seven children, and so far, five of them are already dead due to HIV AIDS. That is endemic Kaposi sarcoma, cancer of the skin. I would say we have access to about 10% of the population. Only about 10% of the patients in the country who need palliative care have access to adequate pain control. 
So a lot of people out there are dying because of pain. They are not attended to, and it is a very big challenge for us. Have you brought some gloves for her? Yeah, we'll give her. Okay, the gloves. Two, three, four. Do you take powder? No, take powder. No, no, take This is what was that? 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 Was Okay. <laughs> Everybody really has the right to die with dignity the right to die comfortably. And, and if you watch people who are dying of HIV AIDS and they're dying of cancer, and there's so much pain that's involved in that, you know, it's really part of our responsibility in helping to develop other countries to make sure that the communities are taking care of each other. Um, it's not a just about population growth or about economic growth. It's really about the quality of life that we have to live. Uh, we are going to the forest to see the traditional healers. Most of our patients will go to traditional healers before they go for healthcare services. And actually 57% of our people die without seeing a Western trained doctor. The traditional healers are within the community where these patients live and they are known by the community that they treat certain ailments. They are trusted by the community and they're easily approachable and they use, uh, they use the, the, the natural things like the herbs, 
the roots of plants, the flowers of plants, and their medications are cheaper or their remedies are cheaper. They're not asking for money. They ask for physical things like a, a, a hen, a chicken, and those are the things that these people can afford because poverty is a very big problem in our communities. They may not get the money to go and pay in the Western, in the hospitals, but they will get a chicken to present to this traditional healer and they get the medicine. Traditional healers are very important to, uh, to palliative care uh, because they are able to identify and refer these patients to the Western trained uh, nurses and doctors. And they also continue with the care in the community. You just get these leaves, then you cook them, and you take in case of malaria. If you have got fever, these are the ones we use. When someone is having a problem in a fallopian tube, he just gets the box of this tree, then he cooks and takes. Today we are studying about yellow fever, so we, we, we gather or we share knowledge on how we treat yellow fever. Since the Rakati, the Yaka, the Nami Wan Fuko, as a sort of wounded Funa Sinti, Suraku, Que and Bissam Marwa, you got Yagi Zungu, and he went over and Bimiranga Nama Gazigang, who so quick Yanya. Bill and also Uganda is a beautiful country. Uganda is always evergreen. Uganda is fertile. You can plant anything and anything will come. You look at it and it's so attractive and it's so beautiful. The green, the animals, it's really a wonderful country. The people themselves are very friendly and you just get in and you're welcome. Everybody will welcome you. And that's why I like my country. In our country, we have over 50 plus languages and I'm so blessed because out of the 57 languages, at least I can speak seven languages. I'm able to communicate with different groups. You want to film this? Bakubuzako. Oliotia. Karitambula. Yes, we should from the well. The well is down. Down, down the other side. Palliative care is very much a nurse-led specialty, particularly in Africa where there's so few doctors. It's not just Uganda, but the whole of Africa needs palliative care. You, if you saw the people who die without palliative care, it's just terrible. You just break your heart looking at it. A lot of people think it's only funding we need. No, we have to have special people in palliative care. It's really a vocation. If you have somebody sick in the family, Initially, we have to do training for the healthcare workers. We need to train them. Then, after we have trained them, we encourage them to start palliative care and we continue monitoring them and supporting them. We've got to be there working alongside them to ensure that they implement palliative care. Morphine is not everywhere, it is only given for severe pain. It's given to districts that have properly trained uh, health professionals, doctors or nurses in palliative care. One third of the countries in Africa don't have chemotherapy or radiotherapy, so there's nothing for them unless they're rich and they can move out. <laughs> This is our only cobalt 6 machine, which is able to treat 
both um, superficial and deep-seated um, tumors. And uh, the workload at the moment is about between 100, uh, 120 patients per day. And we treat from about 7 a.m. on this machine to about 11 um, p.m. at night, sometime up to midnight, depending on the number of patients who, who are there. And we've been with it since 1995, using it. The whole of Uganda has only one radiotherapy center, and the one radiotherapy center cannot serve the 33 million of Uganda. So it becomes a challenge. And even then, the radiotherapy center we have, the power is on and off. They got the specimen of the tumor. They took it for testing in the town because the machine for the hospital is down. Then they brought the results. It was cancer of the throat. I didn't break into tears. I held to my Lord Jesus Christ and said, no, even with the cancer, I can't survive. And then uh, they referred me to a radiotherapy department now for radiation of cancer. That's why I've got this marks on my on my throat, this. But the machine keeps on breaking down. When the machine breaks down, they extend the days ahead, just like that. When somebody gets sick, it affects a family in Africa or South America the same way that it affects a family in America. And in some regards, even more, because if that person is the the breadwinner, if that person is the only person who, who makes any income, when that person gets sick, it, it affects an entire family. It's our responsibility when we're here to, to sit down and say, when people do get sick, how best can we support you to support the individual and to support the family and to support the community? And not to do it with the way that we think is best necessarily. It's not always about high-tech equipment. Sometimes it's about having the appropriate spiritual care or having somebody who can really come in and just change the bed sheets when needed. Um, and our job is to help make that as easy as possible. Signs of plums. That new skin can't press it down. Oh, Send the vehicle on the road. Uh, 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 u